As you might imagine, in order to master digital luxury, it is very important to understand what is luxury at first. And I'm going to try in this uh, section to explain you and to give a definition of what is luxury. First, one has to understand that luxury is not new. It's not something that's been created in our modern era. Luxury actually has been has always been present. And even if it's true that the current form of the luxury industry that we have today is unique and has been a, it's a modern creation, it's also true that luxury has existed on one form or another throughout history. For instance, the oldest piece of codified legislation uh, that we found uh, comes from the Babylonian Empire. It's called the Code of Hammurabi. Um, has some traces of luxuries. It regulates the way people could use some specific kind of luxuries and shows that even uh, in minus 1700 BC, people were, or, were already thinking about luxuries and creating laws to regulate them. Another example comes from the Egyptians that are well known to use ungant, which was a kind of fragrance or perfume that Egyptians used to put in their hair during specific ceremonies, and that would be seen today as the equivalent of a luxurious fragrance. Even some Greek philosopher has envisioned the notion of luxury and talked about it in very famous texts. For instance, Plato and Socrates recognized that luxury would not only be an inevitable element of civilized society, but also a defining one. However, the modern definition of luxury was more or less crafted under the reign of the French king Louis XIV. With his renovation of Versailles in the late uh, 1600s and his establishment of a court culture with a strict and lavish dress code, the French king equated a man's possession with his power. And by doing this, he also put together an etiquette and a set of laws that would be defining in modern luxury. So luxury is not new. And one interesting thing to do is to look at the etymology, so the origins of the word luxury. What does it mean? What does, where does it come from? And actually, when we look at the etymology of this word, it shows that it comes from two different origins that shows the duality of luxury and the two meaning that luxury can have. First, luxury comes from the Latin word lux. Lux is the Latin for light. It means what shines things, you can think about elements of luxury like gold, gemstones, also some kind of conspicuous consum consumption of luxury that shines in the eyes of others. But the other origin of the word luxury comes from the Latin word luxus, which means excess. And within the term luxury, we can already see that there is a social criticism of the notion of luxury, because luxus means excess, what is too much, what is not necessary, and we see that luxury is both of, of those things. It's in the same time what shines, and also what is not exactly necessary for life. So keep in mind, as we go through the modules of this class, that luxury has this dual origin and this dual meaning of lux and luxus. So by now, you should have a good idea about how difficult it is to precisely define luxury. But actually, there are two definitions and two meanings of luxury, one of them being the business or B2B meaning of luxury, and the other one being the more consumer or B2C meaning of luxury. And actually, it's pretty easy to define luxury in a business sense. We all know who are the luxury groups, such as LVMH, Kering, or the Richemont Group. We all know intuitively what is a luxury strategy, what is luxury marketing. We've heard about concepts like selective distribution or the pricing strategies of luxury brands. And in a business sense, there is no real debate about what is luxury, what is not luxury, what is a luxury group or a luxury brand or a luxury marketing or a luxury strategy and what is not. What is more complicated to define is the consumer or B2C meaning of luxury. Indeed, the consumer aspect of luxury is hard to define. And by doing a simple Google search, you could see that there's been hundreds of research papers and articles to define luxury. For decades, business researchers, journalists, 
have tried to define what is luxury, what is not luxury, what are the components of luxury, what is the opposite of luxury, what are the different kinds of luxury, and so on and so forth. Also, it's hard to give a consumer definition of luxury because luxury can be different from one person to another. We talk about absolute luxury versus relative luxury. For instance, for some affluent people, the only true luxury is time or space. Another example, in the 19th century, people were, would get an orange as a Christmas gift and it was considered as an absolute luxury. Whereas today, oranges are considered as mass or very accessible things. So we see that the actual definition of a luxury product or a luxury service can define from one person to another. And last reason why luxury is so hard to define on a consumer standpoint is that the lines between what is luxury and what is not luxury in the consumer world are blurred. For instance, Apple is making phones that are expensive, that use a specific kind of craftsmanship, that are very, of very good quality, and so on and so forth. We see that they share a lot of common characteristics with luxury goods. However, would someone consider Apple as a luxury brand? I mean, there's a debate on it. Some people will say it's a tech brand, it's, it cannot be a luxury brand as most of the products are made in cheap labor countries. Uh, it's also, it doesn't have a true heritage or a true story like a luxury brand could have. But some other people would say, in terms of phone, the most luxurious phone you could get is a state-of-the-art iPhone from Apple. The second example that shows how the lines can be blurred between what is luxury and what is not luxury comes from luxury brand Hermès. Every year for Christmas, people rush into Hermès store to get Christmas gifts for their loved ones. And one of the things you could buy in an Hermès store is a $50 deck of playing cards. Is it luxury or is it not luxury? We, we all know that Hermès is a luxury brand. It's may, maybe one of the most beautiful luxury brands and the most iconic one. However, $50 is not that expensive and a lot of people could afford that. So it sounds like a mass product, even though it's expensive for a deck of cards to pay 50 bucks. So there's a debate. Is it luxury? Is it not? The debate is still open. And as long as we look at the definition of luxury from a consumer standpoint, it is actually very hard to tell if this is luxury or that is luxury or is not luxury. But if we want to try to actually define luxury, this is my favorite definition. And it goes like this. Luxury is the ordinary of the extraordinary and the extraordinary of the ordinary. It's not easy to say, right? But this definition shows the dual nature of luxury. Luxury is, in the same time, the ordinary of the extraordinary. So if you imagine the lifestyle of the rich and famous, their lives are filled with luxury goods and luxury services. Think about haute couture in fashion, high jewelry in jewelry. Think about fine dining, Michelin star restaurants, spas and hotels, five-star hotels, and so on and so forth. And this is what the definition calls the ordinary of the extraordinary. But actually, luxury became a big market and an interesting business opportunity by going further than only the core of luxury, that is, the ordinary of the extraordinary. In the 70s and 80s, the luxury market expanded to other customers that are not the super wealthy or the quote-unquote rich and famous, and they expanded to more regular people who couldn't afford ultra luxury such as a private jet or, having a, or staying in a very luxury hotel, but that wanted to live a part of the luxury experience. And this is the second part of the definition, the extraordinary of the ordinary. For instance, I'm sure that many of you have never bought an actual Hermès or Chanel handbag that costs several thousand dollars or euros. However, if you want to live the Chanel or Hermès brand experience, you can buy a lipstick by Chanel or a fragrance by uh, Hermès and still get a taste of the brand's experience. And this is what the definition calls the extraordinary of the ordinary. Another example could be, for instance, 
um, buying a stay in a suite of a luxury hotel can be extremely expensive, several thousand euros, several thousand dollars. However, many of you can afford to buy a tea time at a luxury hotel, where you'll get a part of the luxury experience provided by the hotel. And that's also an example of the extraordinary of the ordinary. And it's important to understand this dual nature of luxury because a lot of the communication of luxury brand comes from the ordinary of the extraordinary. They talk about how exceptional luxury goods are, the story, the heritage, how they were used by kings and princes and queens throughout the world and throughout history. However, a big part of the business of luxury, it's actually done in the other part, in the ordinary, in the extraordinary of the ordinary. And that's why it's important to understand this dual nature. And as we're getting closer to a real definition of luxury, I wanted to highlight the following quote from Bernard Arnault that shows a specificity of the luxury market. And it goes like this. In luxury, we produce in Italy and in France and we sell to China, when usually it's the opposite. And this is one of the specificities of the luxury market that makes it so interesting and so relevant in regions such as Europe or America. Another thing to keep in mind as we're trying to define luxury is that the luxury industry is actually made of several categories that are very different. This is what I call the 50 shades of luxury. And when we think about marketing, strategy, and digitization, the way those categories behave is very different from one to another. And a category like fashion and accessories will have very different rules than another category such as watches and jewelry or beauty. And even though I'm convinced that all of those categories are impacted and will be impacted by digital, it's true that the digitization of each of those categories is very different from one to another. All along this course, I will share with you some examples from all of the luxury categories, from fashion to wines and spirits, hospitality, cars, uh, watches and jewelry, and so on and so forth. And hopefully, you'll get a better sense of the specific rules and the, the specificities of each of those categories. But believe me, all of those categories, all of the luxury categories can benefit from digitization and can leverage the digital opportunity.